everyone, and welcome to Poet to Poet. Don't touch that dial. This is Poet to Poet. Your regular host, Robert Dunn, is out today, and I'll be taking over for him just for this afternoon. Uh, my name is Lee Harrison, and I'm very, very pleased today to be hosting the show because our guest is the very fabulous Stanley H. Barkin. Do you have a, a favorite poem you'd like to read for us, a, uh, a personal favorite that over the years you've always felt is, is one of your most well, personal there was, or best? Uh, there was an early poem uh, that best? came out in my uh, first book. Uh, well, actually, my second book. The first book was destroyed by a printer. I only managed to save a few poems because they were previously published in a uh, magazine uh, newspaper, actually, at uh, New York University, the Washington Square Journal. Uh, and uh, um, so this is, and it, that was called um, uh, the American Hototogisu. It was a collection of haiku and haiga. The drawings were done by my wife, and I did the, the haiku. And I really didn't know anything about publishing any books, but I put it together in a kind of a dummy, like uh, the SABC of Fruits and Vegetables, and was going to submit it various places. But in the meantime, when I was at NYU, I was asked if I could uh, give some of the poems to the Washington Square Journal, and they published two pages spread of it. From those, I was able to make some postcards that I uh, put into this collection, To Struga With Love which was a collection of postcards um, that my wife illustrated, Picasso, a, a Yugoslav artist, uh, which I gave to the people of Macedonia who have an international poetry festival every August. It's going to be 33 years this year if the war ever stops over there and they can manage to have uh, a thing of poetry again. This is 1999 if you're watching this sometime later. Yeah. So uh, from, my, from my second book, or the book that actually came out without being destroyed, uh, the Black Line Scroll with the cover drawing by my wife, um, As Still as a Broom. Uh, I wrote this as a youth, and its youth was a time when you write of love with full verve, and uh, we know before the, the bones start to crack and creak, <laughs> and before you even think about pulling the rug over your head of you know rug of grass over your head. Uh, as still as a broom. I, I read this in Sicily, actually, and in Struga on the bridge where some specially invited people from among the 200 poets from 40 nations are invited each year. Uh, I read it in English, and it was read in Macedonian by a translator. Love as still as a broom, leaning against the fireplace, all the carpets swept all the ashes grated, and the candles burned down to the black wires, and the windows frosted, starless, moonless. No shoes under the bed, no towel on the floor, only the crease in the pillow, and a smell I can't remember. Ah, the ineffable, what poets always deal with. Well, what do you think is the hardest thing about being a poet? What do you think is the most difficult thing about being a poet? Uh, and conversely, the most joyous. Tell, tell us. Well, the most joyous is that uh, poets can, like uh, Cassius, but in a positive way, look quite through the deeds of things, if not of men. And so we don't just skirt over the surface of places and people uh, and situations. We're digging we, deep and getting the dirt we, out. We and go right into the heart of things. Exposing it, right. And uh, it's, I suppose that is that extra perception that we have that makes uh, life more interesting. So that we, we uh, enjoy, I think, food to the fullest and love to the fullest and, uh, and uh, places that we see. Well, it requires uh, a great sensitivity, yeah. yes. What, what, what do you think is the most difficult thing about being a poet? The, the most difficult thing is that uh, when there is the possibility of sharing uh, the vision and the, and the words and the music uh, of poetry, you usually run into something like this, which I had from uh, a certain relative. Mendel, Mendel, Kachen, Fendel. From this you mach Geld. <laughs> <laughs> Translate that for our friends who don't know Yiddish. Uh, from, from this you make money? Uh, from this you make money, yeah. Uh, in, in effect, a, a poet like in America and many parts of the world, but not in places like Sicily and not places like Macedonia, poet is, is a schmuck. He has it written on his forehead. And like the golem, 
Once in a while, when someone like Ginsburg gets a million dollars for his archives, he can remove one letter, and then he drops back into, uh, well, in this case, not into uh, lifelessness as the Golem did, but into into some degree of, of uh, a notice. This is a family so show, so I should explain that the word schmuck means ornament in... <laughs> Just for those of you who are wondering now what, what we just did here. Um, okay, uh, how about another poem for us? And uh, maybe one from your upcoming uh, ABC of Fruits and Vegetables? Would you, would you give okay. us one from that? Why don't I take one from the ABC first? Okay, okay sure. All right. Um, give us a little taste of what's to come. All right, this is um, uh, called Crane. Uh, it's under H for horseradish, and this is a drawing my daughter did of horseradish. Oh, lovely. Okay. Uh, this was published in the Jewish Week and misspelled as Chain rather than Chain. Frankly, because I always heard my grandfather and my grandmother saying Chain. I never heard the Reish, the R in it. Uh, and as a result, uh, they got more letters than they ever got for anything. Because correcting them, it's Chain, not Chain. Everyone's a scholar. Right. Chain for Max Schwartz, my uh, grandfather, my maternal grandfather. Grandfather liked white horseradish, crane, on his gefilte fish, because it was strong like the Limburger cheese he spread on the large oval slice of pumpernickel he covered with heavy sweet cream, thick from the top of the tin milk can, delivered at pre-dawn to the grocery store he opened at the crack of every morning. Horseradish, after all, is just a weed whose roots in the earth you may by chance spread as topsoil on your lawn. It can grow through sand, asphalt, even cement. It is strong in any form, red or white. But crane is good on flanken and fish, especially on gefilte. If he was still here, you could ask my grandfather. Oh, there's a nice kind of uh, casualness and interplay in there. Uh, you asked for another favorite yes, poem. Favorite. Is another midrash. We share the planet with a number of wonderful creatures, and uh, perhaps the most wonderful of these, in my opinion, is the cat. And this is for all cat lovers. It's called Cats Eden. Does man play with the cat, or does the cat play with man? Wrote Montaigne. Anyone who owns a cat knows the answer to that question. When the first cat crawled up on a rock in Eden, he cautiously considered all the creatures about him. Closing his eyes at too much sun pouring through the leafy overgrowth, he licked his front paws, rubbed his ears, curled his tail around him and purred, well, this one I'll call man, that one woman. Just right for two pets in my garden. They will serve me milk and catnip and caress me whenever I wish. Now it's time to play mouse and cat. On second thought, off to lunch. <laughs> that was Garfield ending. <laughs> Actually, when I, when I read this uh, in front of Shakespeare and Company in Paris uh, before Notre Dame. Uh, you mean the bookstore, not the person? That's right. Right. Uh, a number of people out there, they started to laugh right away, and I didn't know why until it was pointed out to me that the cat that's owned by George Whitman, who's the owner of the, the Shakespeare and Company, the famous Shakespeare and Company, uh, was up on a ledge uh, looking down as if to say, oh, is this one for me? <laughs> and then when I read a different poem, she went inside, and then when I read another cat poem, she came out again and said, oh, this one must be for me. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's so, another example of what yes. I meant to be. And there's, there's a cover of this is in dummy form uh, from the Garden of Eden. This is in English and Italian translated by Saro Liotta, a Sicilian composer, guitarist, uh, who also translates it. We have had Saro Liotta on the show. He yes. was a wonderful guest. Yes. Mm -hmm. When I said interplay, I meant the interplay between y your yeah. use of... Um, of, say, Anglo-Saxon and Latin language, you kind of veer between a very formal and a very casual kind of language, which is interesting. Did you, did you ever notice that? No. <laughs> have, have you taught poetry? Didn't, didn't you yes, teach I, I, you I, I taught for 29 years in the New York City school system. And you taught 
English and poetry? I, and uh, well, in, I taught English, and English as, a sec English as a second language at Boys High School. That was my primary focus there. And I was advisor for magazines. Uh, language News uh, received uh, two medals for the best in the country from Columbia University. Under your and then, ages. Yes. And I also taught Swahili there. And, wow. Uh, beginning, uh, beginning Spanish for students who failed Spanish. Ah, I didn't and know about I'd, the Swahili. Uh, and after there was a revolution at Boys High, sometime afterwards when... Uh, it became apparent that it was necessary to leave. Uh, I went to Beach Channel High School, which was just opening up a school. I was one of seven uh, members of the original English department. And there, they didn't have any use for Swahili or English as a second language, so I became the, t the uh, creative writing teacher. And, teacher and do you poetry. find, what, yeah. what, was, um, what were some of the things you tried to impart to your students? Very briefly, because I want you to read one last poem for us. One okay. last poem. Uh, I tried to part to them to look at things, really look and listen, because there's so much out there that's worth listening to and seeing. And thus, I brought a number of them over to the United Nations for readings. Ah. And for students of Rock, this was in Rockaway, to cross over the bridge at all is like going to another country. Ah. But did, some did, 40 students came to 14 different events we had at the United Nations, and they loved it. Oh, that's yeah. very good. Do you have a last poem that's like just a few lines that you could read in just the last remaining minute? OK. Uh, a very, very short one. Uh, I'll pick another one from... Uh, Brevity well, will be the soul of uh, discretion okay, here. I'll pick it from Medicinal Purposes, uh, Our your very magazine, own. Okay. that uh, was kind enough to publish this. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Immortality. Okay. A footnote after Donald Lev. I jumped off the Brooklyn Bridge twice, but I failed. I didn't die. The Guinness Book of World Records called me up, said I should try again. If I lived, I'd set a record. So I jumped the third time and succeeded. At last, I've achieved immortality. <laughs> That's very delicious. Um, do we have time for one uh, last question? I think so. Um, suppose you were to give advice to um, people submitting work to to you, do you people submit work to you for for books? What what do you tell them? I get about a hundred uh, public uh, submissions a month, and uh, my advice is uh, first to really to. Um, examine what we published in the past mm -hmm. uh, at Poets House or Small Press Center, or better yet, to, to order a, 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 one of our books. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, we're really focusing on our prime and initial purpose, which is bilingual poetry. So anything that's from a language or a country or an ethnic group we haven't published before, we're most interested in, even if we have to go into debt to do it, which I did for many, many years. It's and a hard life being a publisher. <laughs> well, we, we'd like to thank you, Stanley H. Barkin. Okay. Thanks, Stan, for being a guest on our show. We'd like to thank um, our, the Orange Bear and um, Victor and Yuri for having us uh, here and letting us tape. And that's all for this time. We'll see you soon. Tune in again next week to Poet to Poet. This is Lee Harrison. Good evening. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you.